What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the shop today. So uh, we are here. Uh, they're making a push on Fat Man Invasion and getting ready for that stick shift event. As you guys know, I got a nice care package in the mail the other day, a T56 face plated transmission. So what we are going to do today is we're going to be installing my new cool Hanlon Motorsport shifter in my T56 face plated transmission. We put the other newer face plate, uh, excuse me, the other newer T56 that we had, you know, we kind of put that off to the side and we're gonna let her hide under there for a while. That's the Synchro transmission, that new one that I got not too long ago. But um, anyways, before we get started, make sure you hit that like, sub, and bell for notifications. Let's get into it. All right, so let's go through some of the parts that we needed for the swap. As you can see, this is the 351 that I got in my, uh, up here in my in the black car one of the problems that we did have is the fact that this cable wrapped around here because quicktime like has kind of a poor design for the t56 stuff like the work the best thing they could probably do is is uh you know make a double slot here because the cable on some of these oil pan designs like this moroso i have right here it's terrible because you know the oil pan doesn't come down it comes out and kind of planes out well that kind of binds up with this stupid you know th this clutch cable so anyways um we're gonna make a fix to that with the c channel i'm gonna actually cut this piece of c channel i'm gonna actually cut the hole and i'm gonna actually extend this out you guys will see that later so you can see my sfi bell housing that's the quick time bell um this is the old twin that came out which isn't in terrible shape i mean it's a little worn out but you know, that's what twins uh that's what twins do they get a lot of abuse blanchard cut flywheel that's the one we already had in it and uh you know i got these stifflers cross member uh, i got all my bolts ready this is actually a uh, sn95 with the weight removed this is the uh the fork we're gonna stick this shifter on like i had just said i guess what paul's doing right now uh we're gonna stick some gasket sealer on it uh this is my adjustable nut so Anyways, that's pretty much all the parts. I mean, uh, it does take a special drive shaft wherever that went. Uh, it's right here on my wheels. Our drive shaft, and this is a special length drive shaft for the T56 swap, and this is a forged yoke because I bent like three of them already. But uh, <laughs> stop laughing at me. <laughs> gonna go pretty quick. So first things first is we're gonna get the little, we're gonna get this uh, the pilot bearings good. So we're gonna get the the block plate in flywheel set the clutch oh speaking of which got a new clutch too mcleod 69 hd they usually mark all their flywheels like right here here's one thing about twin discs you got to have them in line see this there's a mark these all got to be in line but here's the killer part <clears throat> there's only three spots that there's springs in these don't necessarily have to be lined up, but as long as this, you know, the plate, the mid disc and the base plate are all in the same line as the three springs. So basically this could go with one of three configurations. So as long as you got this stuff lined up, see the spring spring, as long as that stuff's lined up, you're good. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing put in and we're going to have some fun. Okay, one thing about a twin is there's a bottom and then there's a flywheel side and they always mark that too. So this disc is actually brand new and it's not much different than the one I just pulled out. But this is supposed to rate, this is rated at 1200. So it'll take a little more abuse. And then there's a disc inside here in the middle of that base. Um, it also is flywheel side and bottom, you know. So this is obviously faces out because it says bottom. The other side this flywheel. So. Uh, same goes for this disc. You never want to really get them backwards because they're kind of built and balanced kind of the same way. So anyways, let's get it started. All right, so when you're installing a flywheel, block plate's real easy because it goes on the pins. But when you're installing a flywheel, there's a six bolt pattern here. This only goes on one way because that's how it's balanced. So it's kind of a bitch because you can just keep going in circles and I hate that, but that's just the way it is. But you can see we hit it right off the bat, you know, the second second turn. Usually it's marked, but you know, we like to play. We like to party. So, 
Um, you know, you put all six in. The, I torque those at about 90-ish, and these are ARPs. So I don't trust anything else for the most part. So uh, we will tap our pins in. We don't really need the pins for this, but we uh, will tap our pins in here in a minute. Uh, we could do it on the floor, but it doesn't really matter. So my, my next move is to start taking this twin apart. And then we're going to start blow, you know, uh, wiping everything down with brake cleaner. And we are going to be uh, installing this twin. All right, so I'm going to do something really cool here. Um, it, this may or may help some people when determining twin disc, you know, wear or whatever. I mean, obviously you look at it. But from what I'm seeing on a new disc with my dial indicators, it's around, you know, 0.32 of an inch and this is 0.23 this is the flywheel side of the bottom disc so i'm gonna check the one that we beat the shit out of <laughs> and we're gonna see how much wear not that this is the right way to do it because each of them probably wear differently but we'll see how much you know and i've had a lot of a lot of hits on these so wow that's not bad at all 0.314 of an inch 315 I mean you can still see some of the glaze but one thing you can do to these is you can actually take scotch bright and sand them just real lightly to take the glaze off when you're reinstalling and stuff but yeah I mean twin disc takes a beating bro so I'm gonna actually measure the the top plate when I get it out uh, when I take it apart and uh, We'll do the same thing. I'm real interested in stuff like that. All right, so one thing you got to pay attention to, and Cousin Paul here is doing it, is these stupid little flat washers. Like, these things will get caught all up in the uh, <laughs> in the pressure plate. Trust me, it happens. And I've had it lodged in there where I literally had to take it to a machine shop. So you got to be super careful because there's double washers on this first set of, uh, you know, of bolts for this, this mid-disc, as I call it. So it's got to be... You know, it's, you just got to pay attention to detail. You pull it off. And then here's my top plate. Okay. And you can see it does the same thing. It says flywheel side and top. It's probably the same disc as that is. But it is what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure it again. You know, so. Take that one apart for me real quick. I think that's just fingered together, right? So top plate is not as big as bottom plate. This one? Yeah, okay. You ain't got none on it. It's like three inch, 0.3 uh, inch, a third of an inch or whatever you want to call it. Right? So let's see what the wear is on the other top plate. Ooh, this one looks beat up. But it probably isn't. Hmm. Okay, we're at zero. Wow, that's not really that bad at all. 0 0.290 compared to brand new. That clutch is still good. I mean, we know it held for the most part. But, anyways. We're going to RMA that one. I got three what? twin discs. <laughs> we're going to RMA that one and make that HD RXT 1200. See? And then we're going to keep this one as just a spare. We'll probably put that in the Steeda clone I'm about to do. So I kind of just threw an Easter egg out at you. So make sure the springs are together. Yeah, you're all right. You're all right. Go ahead and set it down there. Yep. So, all right. Let's get back to business. We already torqued the flywheel. We're going to start installing all this disc stuff. So uh, this bottom plate goes in first. And this is where your normal clutch bolts would go. Hey. Um, Do they have this on there? Uh, probably not. Those are, those are my flywheel bolts. So you can see here there's the flywheel bolts, okay? So there, you get your normal flywheel bolts with the pressure plate and you put the you know the bottom disc on underneath okay and then this plate the bottom disc will get held in with the um with their provided alignment tool and then this plate will go on top of it while somebody holds the alignment tool and then you you torque this plate down with the six bolts that you normally would do a normal clutch with okay because you can see multiple bolts i also got to put my pins in then after this is torqued in you can see there's new studs for the top plate or the pressure plate so you put the top plate on you put the pressure plate on put all these nifty little bolts back in and then you, you tighten that down 
all while it's still aligned and and all while it's still marked on the same spring like i told you earlier you know what i mean so we got our pressure plate bolts ready to go in that's our next move and we're gonna get this thing installed that way i can get the bell housing on and we get the trans back in it's not too bad it's not that bad bad of an install you just got to pay attention to detail that's all cousin paul <laughs> All right, so where you got, you can see, and Cousin Paul's got to move his hand, but it says bottom on the disc. Bottom faces out. Obviously, flywheel side is flywheel side. Uh, we got our pins in. You can see I got my pins in. And we're about to put the mid-disc in. Now, I've already cleaned the one side of it. I'm not going to clean the other side until I actually get this in and, and, and torque down. So uh, it's a pretty simple install. Uh, the twin, uh, it takes a little bit of practice, but, you know, I'm showing you some stuff here. All right, so we're moving right along with the uh, install of my twin, and we're about to get to the point to where we're going to have to lift this heavy son of a bitch. And that thing is heavy. Mm -hmm. But anyways, before we get started on that, you can see I lined up my pins, and McLeod does this from the factory. It's always kind of smart, and this is what we're going to do if we ever take it out, because we like to clean our stuff up, is you're going to want to make uh, witness marks with like a pick or something because you want to line these up but like i said it could go one of three places and i haven't tightened any of this down yet but um you know the top went in the top disc went in just like the bottom disc you know what i mean tops faces out you know obviously says flywheel side or whatever so what's going to happen is when i start tightening these six down and i have to keep going around um these fingers are going to start moving in so once they move in it'll be set and we're going to go ahead and stick our bell housing on and get it finished so anyways uh Stay tuned and we'll keep going. All right, so one of the problems I did have in my black car is the fact that this cable, like I was saying earlier, this cable would be uh, like kinked or whatever from the old style setup because of the way the oil pan was. And you can see the T56, now that it's installed, you can see <laughs> how this would be a problem. So I actually managed to, I did, I massaged my oil pan a while back, a long time ago, but um, you know, you can see how this is a mega problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this bolt and this hole, which where the cable would usually go, and we're gonna bolt this bracket I'm about to make. That way I'm gonna cut a hole on the outside of this bracket here to see channel. And actually this cable is gonna sit right here, which is kind of nice because the fork is long and it, that was another problem is the fact it came around this corner, came in this hole and then actually came out this way. So it was, this is gonna set it nice and aligned. It's gonna have a nice throw on the clutch and the cable's not gonna get all messed up. So this is a problem that QuickTime really should uh, fix. You know, they should make a multi, you know, a multi-bolt type of setup and or offer a bracket that goes right here for people that have that sort of a problem, but you know, whatever. All right, so we got all the safety stuff in this bell housing. We got the uh, the starter put in. Um, we actually shaved this for the turbo downpipe a long time ago had to modify it um what we did here what i thought was really cool is we made a bracket um this is the bracket and you can see i got it right in the middle of the hole here well the problem i was having like i said in the other earlier is the fact that this line was because of my oil pan it was kinked it was kinked and then it had to come around and my clutch fork was long and whatever so i actually made a bracket with c channel here uh i made a hole that fit right into this bell housing bolt. And then this is actually a strut, a strut mount, a strut bolt. That was a cousin Freddie's idea. And we used, uh, we bolted this bracket in two spots instead of welding it. And this clutch cable is now moved over about an inch and a half, two inches, clears this. And now we can put our fork in and have a good belt, you know, have a good, good travel here for our clutch cable. So we were binding up pretty good. So um, we're getting close to, we're about to put the, uh, Lightweight gear oil, uh, face plates I like to run. Uh, this stuff's like $20 a quart, $18 a quart, but I like to run shockproof lightweight gear oil. Uh, the Sancros, it's not very nice to, but you know, we're not gonna see fifth and sixth a lot and uh, I'm not really worried about it. I've ran that in my TKOs for years, so we're about to get it filled up and then we're about to put it up in there. So stay tuned. So we just went ahead and did most of the install right off the bat. <clears throat> Me and cousin Paul and uh, cousin Fred over here. You know what I mean? So you can see this cool little bracket we made. This bracket actually helps with the throw of the cable because obviously I got an oil pan that sucks. So we made this bracket out of C-channel that moved the cable over and we made a bracket here on the fork, which we just used the where the old weight was. And uh, I think, you know, since it's a faceplate, it's a little forgiving, but 
you know, go ahead and push it in, Paul. You can see how close, how nice and clean that is right there. Okay. And then we're checking air gap and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not going to get crazy with it, but some of the install is getting these eight bolts in, uh, 150 pounds up, get it in, get it set. You know, you got all your safety bolts. Um, clutch fork just slips in. Um, it's actually part of, you know, that throw out bearing and your, your, your input shaft. So, you know, we got the wiring harnesses, the VSS and the, uh, you know, the mount. We got to put a little spacer on these for T56s because they have to actually sit up. It's actually supposed to go up a little bit more. But, uh, you know, we got our drive shaft in 12 millimeter bolts. We always lock type those in red. And, you know, this is a pretty basic install. You know what I mean? And when it comes to putting a T56 in a Fox body, you know, you need a cross member and you need this specific bell and the block plate and stuff. Well, once you get the kit and get all the parts, it's a pretty basic install. Uh, the other things I can tell you, though, is this uh, this breather tube likes to get stuck, which it has. And uh, the, the shifter, let me get a light up in here. The shifter base gets real close to the bottom of the floor pan, so you got to kind of clearance your way in, whatever. So we're gonna get that uh, that that breather tube nice and clear, and I think cousin Paul's up there putting a shifter on. So we're about to fire this thing up and take it for a ride. All right, so we decided to call it a day. We got the car. We actually made two or three heat cycles in it already. Um, clutch is like, I mean, the feel of the clutch is just ridiculous. Um, on side note, got a new boost controller in the mail. We put the blue one back on the uh, on Hot Wheels over here. But yeah, I mean, you can see, I'm going to show you some pedal effort. This is that twin disc that I was showing you guys that I was putting in. I mean, watch. I mean, it's it's so easy. Look at that. Like, I could push this down with my hand. Look. I mean, and it's adjusted. You could feel it engaging. But that's how nice that twin disc stuff is. I mean, it's it's got a really like an OEM clutch feel to it. And you know, we would already made about three three heat cycles on it. So uh, I figured I'm gonna do about 10, eight or 10 to be happy. Uh, I got a little hard on it this time, which was good. Clutch is, I mean, it's just stuck and go. Uh, transmission shifts like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it's so easy, but I mean, and it's powerful too, so it's gonna hold the power. So uh, we're gonna do, I don't know if I really like this big housing on this big turbo on this motor yet. We used to run the Turbonetics with the smaller 60, 68 wheel, and it just brought this car to life. And it was like running 970s. I mean, it was crazy. But when I, ever since I put this precision on, it just it doesn't fit the combo just perfectly. Like it, like, like a little 70 millimeter on, on high wheels over here. You know, that thing just fits and it works and it's boom, it just makes power. But we're not going to give up on it just yet. So uh, we're going to wrench on a little bit tomorrow and stay tuned.